Our next speaker is a managing director at care.com, where she handles over 100 employees and 20 projects focused on care and quality care. Today she'll be talking about the ways in which quality care services can improve the future of work. Her name is Laura Esnaola. Please give it up for Laura. Thank you. Hello, my name is Laura Esnaola, and as you've heard, I'm the managing director for Care.com Europe. Um, across 20 countries and a team of about 100 people in Berlin. I have three team members actually who joined me in this conference and I'm going to put them on the spot. They don't know about this, but they love it. Uh, so we have Dirk who heads up our PR and communications team and does a lot of the serving around what we do. We have Angela who heads up our business insights and analytics. And we had Joaquin here who left yesterday who heads up our user experience from a product perspective. Um, and I hope that you've met them, and if not, feel free to ping them before the conference ends. And we're all very honored to be here today. We hosted a dinner yesterday, and we had stakeholders from many different areas talking about the gig economy, surprise, surprise. Um, but we put a, a lens to it, which was a gender lens and an inequity lens as we talked about the future of work. And I found it very surprising, but also was very happy to see that uh, we overlapped in many opinions, but in others we didn't. And so before I go on, I actually would love to turn the spotlight, spotlight on you to find out a bit about who is in the room. Um, with a show of hands, can you tell me if you are an academic? Wow, okay, great. Um, what about unions? I heard that there's some unions here. Maybe they're all gone? <laughs> okay. <laughs> for the weekend? Oh, that's mean. All right. Um, what about uh, social enterprise? Do we have such a... No. Great. Okay. Okay. What about for-profit enterprises or platforms? All right. We have a few. What about government? Yes. One government person. Excellent. What about gig workers? Who has been a gig worker before? Okay. Who is a gig worker now? Excellent. Um, I want to thank um, Giovanna for um, convening us here because I believe that in order to tackle the world's largest problems and turn those into an opportunity, all of us need to work together, all different stakeholders need to come together and convene in order to redefine the solutions. Today we're talking about gig work and we're talking about social inclusion and welfare. And I believe in a time of change, in a time of technology <laughs> mandating how we spend our time, uh, in a time of AI and the future of work making us, making me a little bit nervous about what my future will look like, uh, I believe that there's no silver bullet. And I believe that, as I said, we all need to come together. And I think that the private sector, including care.com, needs to step up to play its role. So today I want to give you an insight into the care economy, what the care economy is and what care.com does from our perspective in order to find solutions to create social inclusion and be part of the solution longer term and create value. But before I do that, so let me tell you a little bit more about who I am. Um, as I said before, I'm Laura. I'm actually from Spain and grew up speaking German in Madrid. Spent 15 years in the United States, a bit of time in China, learning the language, and I grew up um, being trained as a concert violinist. And I have two passions in life. The first one started at age of four, and that was my violin. And I still play it as a hobby. And then my second passion evolved when I was 13, 14, when I told my mother that I wanted to create jobs for underprivileged people, and particularly for women. And that's what I've been doing for the past 15 years. So I joined Care.com in 2012 um, because I saw the passion behind this project and the opportunity to really change the world. And what I saw in, at Care.com that really spoke to me was three things. One of them was it's about women's empowerment and gender parity at work and at home. The second one is about jobs and about jobs for women in the, in the millions and in an informal sector and there's a lot of work to be done. And then the third one, which I think is very important, which is leadership 
And that comes all the way from the founder and CEO of our <coughs> company, Sheila Marcello, who is a power woman and incredibly mission driven and wants to go out and change the world. And that trickles down to the fiber of our organization, which I think is very important. So what does Keracom actually do? So Keracom was founded in 2006, and we have grown to become the largest online destination worldwide to finding and, and managing your care services. So that's nannies, elderly care, home care, pet care, pay your caregivers legally, particularly in the US. Um, as mentioned before, we're in 20 countries. We have almost 30 million members, families and caregivers on our site and growing. Our business models. No worries. <laughs> our business models are, are three. The main one is what we call B2C. It's we connect families and caregivers to find each other. It's an online platform. The model is the families pay. They pay a subscription model to have access to the care workers. The care workers don't pay on our site. And that is the main part of our business. We also have a B2B business where we work with HR departments at mostly larger corporations to offer care services as an HR benefit. So very often, especially in the United States, um, families rely on nannies, full-time nannies, to take care of their kids because childcare is cost prohibitive. So when a nanny calls you or your nanny calls you at 7 a.m. and says, I'm not going to make it, I'm ill, parents usually look each other in the eyes and say, who stays home and whose career do we put on the line today? So care has, care.com has a service where we send uh, pre-vetted and screened caregivers through our agencies, partner agencies or our own uh, employees to your home within two hours or you can book it in advance if you want to. So that's our B2B model. And then the third one, which is smaller but, but growing fast, is actually in the healthcare sector. We have a shortage of nurses in most OECD countries. In Germany alone, we have a shortage of 40,000 nurses right now. In the UK, the same. I heard yesterday at dinner that in the Netherlands, it's also uh, rising. Uh, in Japan, it's about 230,000 shortage of nurses right now and growing. And then you have countries like the Philippines where you have 250,000 unemployed nurses or underemployed nurses looking for jobs. So care.com has been working on a project called Care with Care, where we train un or underemployed nurses in certain countries and work with them for 12 to 18 months and actually bring them across borders right now into Germany and soon the UK to help them find access to jobs at institutions, hospitals and elderly care um, uh, providers. So that is what care.com does for us. Our core business is a two-sided marketplace. And in order for us to thrive, we need that two-sided marketplace to be healthy. And we know that we need to set our caregivers up, up for success in order to have uh, a prominent future. So let's talk a little bit about the care economy. When I say care economy, do people in the audience feel identified? As in like, oh yeah, I. I'm affected, or I know what that is. Yes, no, I see some nods in both directions. No, <laughs> there's a clear no over there. Um, <clears throat> we believe that the care industry is actually a crucial industry for the future of work. Um, let's see, has anyone had caregivers cleaning their homes? A few people. Um, has anyone had nannies or children that, you know? Okay, a few. What about elderly care? Has anyone, does anyone have a parent or, an, or a grandparent that needs care or, yeah, or it's, it's being taken care of? Yeah. So, I think most of us in this audience have come in touch with care, care needs. What I find very interesting is that when we talk about care, it's often dismissed as a women's topic or a soft topic. And in reality, it's actually econom an economic powerhouse. And the, the statement that I want to make here today, let's see if I can convince you, is that care and the care economy can actually be a solution to some of the issues that we see in the future of work. Let me tell you why. So I'll throw out a number, 80, no, 80, 28, 28 <laughs> trillion dollars. That is the additional GDP that we can add 
if women worked as much as men. That is the GDP combined of China and the US every year. No AI, no automation, no nothing of this future of work. It's just us women showing up at work as much as men. Now, I'll give you a few stats from a Germany perspective. 47% of women in Germany work part-time, on average 20 hours a week. 33% of women that have a child in the ages from zero to three don't even go to work. What is very interesting, a report, recent report from Gallup and ILO, the International Labor Organization, states that the single most determinant factor of whether a woman goes back to work or not is, can you guess? Care. <laughs> Care solutions, right? Um, a side note that I find very interesting is when you as a woman do unpaid work, men too, but women do 2.1x the amount of unpaid work that men do. But when you do unpaid work, you're not contributing to your social pension system, right? And what we're seeing more and more is um, elderly poverty, m mostly amongst women after the age of 65. What I also find interesting is that men, especially min millennials, are saying, I'm actually working more. 20% of men, of, of new parents, um, are working more after they have a child. But 40% would rather stay at home more and work less. So there's an imbalance, right? So I'm telling you this because th the hypothesis that I'm throwing out there is it seems like women want to work more. It's good for GDP and the future of work and it's good for gender parity and finally closing that gender cap, uh, pay gap and all of that. So the answer is like, well, why, why don't we just get more care? And we're actually working with governments around the world to incentivize the right tax systems or programs in order for families to have access to them. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. And the reason for that is because we have a care crisis at our doorstep. We are expecting a shortage of about 2 million nurses in Europe by 2025. We currently have a shortage of about 130,000 childcare educators, educators, teachers, and caregivers in Germany alone and growing. Globally, we're expecting the care shortage, caregiver shortage to be about 10 million by 2030. So why? Why is this happening? My personal philosophy is there are a couple issues with this. One, the work of a caregiver is not valued, is not respected. The sector is informal. There are no career trajectories. And the last point is pay. Caregivers are underpaid. So what are the solutions? And I'm going to throw three of them out there, and I'm happy to hear more during the Q&A. One of them is AI and robots. Just build robots who will take care of our people. The second one is immigration. Open borders, get people in. Third one is to professionalize the industry. So a few words to each one of them. Robots are happening. The Japanese government is investing in robots and they look pretty cool. I mean, there's a robot that speaks, speaks uh, 64 languages or something and is uh, dealing with old people in, in Japan. And some interesting studies have been done of you know, them being a bit more calm when they interact with robots. Um, it is my personal philosophy that care should be a human job. And even though there will be automation, and there should be automation, workflow automation for nurses, or lifting, or Dyson is doing this AI-powered vacuum cleaner that I find a bit scary. Um, all good, but the, the nature of care should continue to be human. So we're not really looking into that as much. The second one, immigration, I find fascinating because you will look at governments like the UK that has been pushing for Brexit and one of the main drivers of Brexit is not wanting immigrants, right? And stopping the immigration flow into the UK. Do you know what the UK government did two months ago? They created a whole new visa category for nurses. So all nurses can come in. They need to take an exam, but they can all come in. They didn't mention this publicly so much, right? Um, so the immigration component I find incredibly fascinating and, and we need to keep an eye on that. And the third one is professionalizing the industry, which is something I want to talk about more of what Care.com is doing. Um, 
care is, is a profession that is informal. There's no certificate, right? There's no clear uh, tra uh, trajectory on that. And that is something that um, we want to work on from a care.com perspective, and, and I'll tell you a bit more about what we do there. Um, so in a world where families are willing to pay a golf caddy $17 an hour, but only pay a caregiver on average $9 an hour. In a world where 60% of caregivers in the US don't have access to healthcare benefits, and about 33% of them are not paying into social security systems. We believe at care.com that we need to mostly focus on that third bucket, which is the professionalizing the industry. So let me tell you a little bit about what we've done. And we've done many things, so I've, I tried to bucket them into four things. One is training, the second is education, the third is benefits, and the fourth is actually immigration. So a few words to each one of them. Um, training. Care.com has launched the Care Institute. It's a nonprofit 501c3 status organization that is creating a, a program, a workforce training program to A, identify career paths for caregivers and then train them to get there. As in, you can start out being a nanny, but in three to five years, you can be a home health aide making three times what you're making now. That is uh, one thing that we were doing as well as online access to certain modules like Finance 101 so you can take control of your, of, your, of your finances. The second one is education. And education has two components, the family side and the caregiver side. So from a family side, we've done a few things. One is the fair care pledge, which I always have issues saying. It's like a tongue, tongue teaser. Fair care pledge, um, where families raise their hands and say, I am going to pay my caregiver appropriately. Uh, I'm going to be transparent about what I'm expecting from the caregiver. And a very important one is time off, being very clear on time off. We have over 650,000 families who have signed the Fair Care Pledge. And we also promote the Good Work Conduct, which is a framework for um, gig workers um, in terms of the framework of, of employment between families and, and caregivers. So that is around education for the families. For the caregivers, we have a library of men, a lot of information from like contracting to tips to safety, um, as well as the um, Domestic Bill of Rights, which is a, 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 a bill that exists in eight States in the United in the United States, and we've created a very easy to use way for the caregivers to to actually understand what that is and and, and fight for their own rights. So that is the training and the education benefits. We've created a pooled benefits platform where families and Care.com and the caregivers themselves can put money into their account and take those benefits with them, no matter who they're working for, and whether it's on care.com platform or somewhere else. And that money is tax deductible, et cetera, and it can be used for co-pays, medical co-pays, or medic medication, or travel to the employer, or for your pension fund. And we have partnered with Stride Health, which is a um, health insurance engine that actually works with every gig worker to find the best in health insurance for each one of them. So that is um, what we've been doing around benefits. And the last but not least is immigration. So we've done two programs in immigration. One in Germany. So when the refugee crisis hit in Germany, um, we thought that we had to step up as a company. And I did a lot of research around women. And I saw that 90% of refugee women had answered a survey um, where they said that they wanted or expected to work, and only 10% of them actually had a job about two and a half years into the crisis, um, or were enrolled in government programs that would get them to a job. So I went to many refugee shelters to meet these women and ask them, hey, do you want to work, and why, and why not, why are you not doing it? And all of them said, yes, I want to work, but I just don't know how. 
So we partnered with IRC, International Rescue Committee, and have created a training program to help refugee women enter the workforce in, in care professions. So we've been doing that and have trained almost 200 women by now and plan to train another 1,000 over the next year. And the last program that I will mention is the one that I already connected or told you about before, which is training unemployed nurses abroad and bringing them across borders in a transparent way um, and, and looking at labor rights, obviously, throughout this entire process to, to make sure that they're protected. So in, in summary, what I've told you today is I hope I've introduced you to this care crisis concept and the importance of solving for it because care it's really a fundamental industry that powers all the other ones. If we're set up properly at home regarding care, we can then go to work and do our jobs and, and really be productive in society. And um, Care.com is very committed to finding solutions that will create social inclus inclusion for the care workers. And the one thing that I will say is that we haven't done this alone. We have cooperated with unions, with organizations like the National Domestic Workers Alliance and Hand in Hand in the United States that are the biggest care worker organizations. We've worked with universities, with governments, with competitors at times, which is very fascinating, because we know that we can't do this alone. So as we look into the future and pursue a vision to help hundreds of millions of families and care workers, we look forward to partnering with more stakeholders and more partners across all, all areas in order to really create a very healthy industry around the care industry because we believe it's the backbone to the future of work. So thank you.